Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Reg Gaming Today.com video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with NVIDIA's GeForce 11 series, and this actually augments the news that we had yesterday concerning the release window for these new graphics cards. So yesterday, for those who missed it, I'll place a link in the video description if you did, but the synopsis is that um, Lenovo, who of course are a well-known PC manufacturer, were discussing their upcoming PC lineup and the representative there did mention, let it slip if you prefer, that the GeForce 11 series was going to be launching sometime this year, most likely in fall. Now, today we have another piece of information, that is that members of the press apparently are being invited by NVIDIA to attend Gamescon, which is August 21st or onwards. There's not a specific release, uh, there's not a specific window there, by the way, and there's not a specific mention of GeForce 11. Instead, they're saying that it's, well, you know, the latest games, which is a bit curious. I mean, some of these members of the press are going to be getting trips paid for, we can presume. And I don't think they're going to uh, want to cough up all of that cash just to play PUBG or something like that at you know, a different convention. So whether or not we're going to see a launch there or not isn't, of course, official by any stretch of the imagination. But I wouldn't be surprised if at the very least we see a press briefing concerning this new lineup of cards. But to add to the confusion, we also have a report from Digi Times, which are a fairly well-known and respected uh, website in the tech community, and they also have a report concerning the release of Windows slash date of the new graphics cards. So according to their sources, prices for graphics cards have absolutely tanked over the past couple of months, and they reckon they're going to go down another 20% in July alone. That's a good thing, obviously. In other words, we're actually able to buy cards at MSRP, which is kind of shocking, to be honest. I mean, you'd expect, if anything, these cards to be at a price cut by now, actually lower than the MSRP of introduction. Instead, we gamers are actually happy that they're being sold at the price that we originally could purchase the darn things at, which is kind of insane. But you might recall news that a certain AIB, they were not named, they just were said to be one of the big three, sent back 300,000 GPUs to NVIDIA. Just to clarify, we're not talking about the graphics card, we're referring to the GPU, which is literally the you know thing that sits on the PCB, the processor if you prefer, um, back to NVIDIA because they just could not sell it on things. And why is this? Well, it's a long story, but really it comes down to mining and the fact that the market has very much fell out of mining because miners now are either giving up entirely because it's not profitable if they're a smaller scale operation or they're buying graphics cards in much smaller quantities or they're moving towards ASICs, which is particularly true in certain regions and for certain currencies. Either way, the fact is that graphics cards are no longer so profitable when it comes to mining, therefore that fewer people are purchasing them by the literal truckload. And that's leading NVIDIA to an inventory supply problem. According to sources, NVIDIA's next generation GPUs made using TSMC's 12NM and 7NM processors are also expected to be postponed to late fourth quarter 2018 until after inventory that uh, returns to safe levels. So in case you've like, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, quite simply, NVIDIA have such an abundance of graphics cards that they're trying to get rid of, such an abundance of hardware, and they just don't want to make new cards. And then what are they going to do with Pascal? After all, let's say that they launch the 11 series, who in their right mind is then going to be like, well, gee, that 1080 tie certainly looks very tempting. So the only way they can do that, of course, is to cut prices in the short term. So hopefully... This does not affect the launch. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, those two pieces of news really conflict with one, of, one another. And I do agree. It's a bit weird, actually, when you think about all the news at the moment. Because we've seen, of course, the leaked PCB shot that we had uh, examined a couple of times over. And we can see that the core is absolutely gargantuan. But while all those specifications and everything are really awesome, it doesn't help us unless the darn thing's actually launched. And the Novo are saying fall. But if it's postponed again until the late fourth quarter, that could mean November. So what the heck is going on at Gamescom? Well, there's a couple of theories. One, the source is wrong. Two, well, 
the invite is nothing at all to do with GeForce 11. So it could just be Nvidia showing off, I don't know, more stuff about GeForce now for all we know. Or another possibility, and certainly a good one, is that Nvidia are just briefing the press of an upcoming architecture. So for example, and this is just a pure example, they could have maybe just one or two of these GPUs made, show the cards off in August, and then in September time, of course, they're going to start producing the card. Maybe the press are actually under NDA. We don't know that. So it could be, because remember about that, that uh, NDA that went around that members of the press were uh, asked to sign? So it's possible that the members of the press will not be allowed to say anything. They will just be briefed about what NVIDIA are doing. And then, well, August rolls round, end of August, September now. AIBs start getting the new hardware, perhaps. Um, from what we're hearing, it's going to be very limited quantities, although I'm still not sure if I believe those rumours. But let's just say, for the sake of this, that even if they're not true, it's still going to be like September before, assuming that the cards have not been sent to manufacturers at this point, it's going to be September that we start seeing uh, AIBs really start to ramp up production. Therefore, it could be October before they start to go to store shelves. Ultimately, right now, no one 100% knows. All we can do is just wait. My personal opinion, and this has got nothing to do with specifications of the card, this is more to do with buying advice. I just wouldn't buy anything. It's that simple. Unless you really need to buy a GPU right now, I would personally just wait and hold fire. So, there's also another piece of news, and this one actually concerns AMD. So, remember how I just said that news has leaked that members of the press are receiving invitations to go to an event from NVIDIA? Well, AMD are not to be outdone, apparently, and they have also issued members of the press with an invite as well, although it is going to take place around a month earlier. We don't have specific details, however, of the products which are going to be shown. Certainly, Threadripper is a good bet. I mean, Threadripper 2 could certainly be on the cards. Perhaps some other Ryzen processors that we don't know about. It may be about the 2800X, possibly. But it is kind of interesting to me that AMD are also putting this out. Now, another potential possibility, of course, is 7NM Vega, possibly a gaming derivative. We did see the uh, Vega Pros, the 7NM Vega Pros, which, of course, are primarily for prosumers, so perhaps people who want to do 3D rendering or modeling or a little bit of video production or HPC work at home. But still, the fact is that those cards are not that different from the RX Vegas, right? Well, at least if the previous generation are anything to go by. And there is also another small piece of AMD news which could be of interest as well. And that is that PCIe 4.0 preliminary drive support has been found in Linux. Now, what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, we don't know exactly what products are going to be supported as yet. So... Possibly we could be looking at Navi supporting this, but it could also be Vega 20. Don't forget one of the earliest leaked slides of the Vega 20 lineup 7NM Vega was that it would support PCIe 4. Up until now, we thought that maybe AMD had abandoned those plans, but it's possible that that's not the case. Now, what does PCIe 4 give us? Well, it doubles the memory bandwidth compared to the previous generation, meaning that you're looking at 16 GTS for raw bitrate, which means around 64 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which is pretty darn awesome. That is, of course, by way and, you know, peak and all of that stuff. But still, it's still pretty damn impressive, that level of bandwidth. Now, PCIe 4 probably won't be that much use for gamers, honestly. Uh, but it will be very handy, at least for now. Obviously, that things will change as that time progresses. But what it will be handy for is for folks who, I guess, are running multiple GPUs, HPC usage, as well as NVMe drives and that type of thing. Because ultimately, those things eat up memory bandwidth like crazy. And they actually stress the entire I.O. So, Obviously, the chips actually having additional memory bandwidth to uh, communicate across the board would be incredibly important. And just a final little uh, thing on that as well. It's possible that we could see dual Vega cards. Now, we have heard some uh, rumours concerning dual Vega cards, but nothing has actually been that solid, and AMD have not, perhaps most important of all, confirmed it. As for Zen, well, Zen 2 supposedly does support 
uh, PCIe4. However, PCIe4 as an actual specification is going to be fairly short-lived. From what we're hearing, PCIe5 will quickly replace it. But at least in the short term, we're going to see a nice bump in performance from parts that really are constrained by the bus. Now, Intel has certainly had a lot of criticism thrown at them recently, and that's putting it mildly. But they do still do some cool stuff. And while the 10NM process has certainly seen a fair share of delays, there have been one or two uh, products which have, of course, used it and have been semi-released. They're certainly not uh, popular products, at least compared to, let's say, the 8700K. But um, it does offer 2.7 times the density compared to 14NM++. And that has actually been confirmed by an independent company. A technology intelligence firm called Tech Insights actually dissected an Intel Canon Lake processor and put it actually under an electron microscope. And according to their claims, we see logic transistor density of 100.8 megatransistors per mm squared, increasing 10 nm density to 2.7 times over the 14 nm uh, node, and utilizes third generation FinFET technology. Now the processor in question is the i3-8121U, and it's a dual core processor, which was the first 10 nm processor uh, Intel actually released. Now this thing does not actually even have an IGP, and the fact it doesn't have one from what we're understanding is down to the fact that Intel were getting poor yields with this. But even so, when Intel perfects this technology, and I do stress when, we're gonna look at a very nice jump in performance. And I believe, truly, that Intel will be very competitive with this. It will, and obviously processes are very difficult to compare one to the other, but it should compare rather favorably to 7NM that uh, AMD will be using with, let's say, the Zen 2 architecture. So it will certainly be like round. I don't even know what round it will be at this point. The companies have been at it for so long. But it will be round something something, and it will certainly be a good fight between the two companies. And really, it's going to be down a lot to the architecture as well. But I wanted to report this because it is a nice positive thing uh, for Intel. And I do look forward to what's going to happen when they manage to perfect the process. And we start seeing larger chips like, for example, the 9700 or what have you actually use this thing. And of course, the products appear on store shelves. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.